Uh, we, the Community Education Task Force, together with parents, community groups that um, had interest within a lot of questions surrounding what's going on within the Rochester City School District. What are some of these initiatives? What are these some of programs? We've had to do there's some research and there's a lot of confusion. There's so much going on right now and there's a lot of different information that's out there but it's not readily available so we thought we could put our heads together and share information. Because there's a lot of information and I believe that's intentional to kind of inundate us with information so that we can't uh, really clearly understand what's supposed to happen in the future. So in many ways the, the situation that we're in is a, is a conflict or a fight between privatization and community determination. And I put what is the plan for our schools, but what I was first going to put originally was, um, you know, is this are we seeing the conquest of our communities? This facilities modernization plan represents the largest public works project in the history of Rochester. It in involves $1.5 billion. $1.5 billion. Talk about people being after profits. And it's going to be laid out over the next 10 to 15 years. This is not just the school district, it's also the city, because the money, to get the money to do this, they had to what they call float bonds, and I don't know a whole lot about how that process works, but the school district can't float bonds. The city has to float the bonds. So this is a project between the two of them together. The state has promised to reimburse 90% of this $1.15 billion. They're not talking about this part. That means that the school district is responsible for paying back 10% of this. You figure, I'm not good with math, you figure 10% of one and a half billion. That's a good chunk of change, right? So to, remember, the school district has to pay that part back. And nobody's talking about that, how that money is gonna be paid back. This is the Rochester City School District's document detailing what the uh, district charter compact is. This is a Gates Foundation uh, approved in competitive grant that's endorsed, that's been pushed, that we, uh, our superintendent, Superintendent Jean-Claude Brizard, has co-endorsed and signed our district onto, right? So this document right here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little interactive activity. If you read, if you find something in this uh, document that sounds suspect, that sounds like they may be not telling you the whole story, or they're maybe omitting something in the situation, you're to highlight either that word or that phrase. I was tempted to highlight the whole document, but let's not do that for now. Now, this project is problematic for a number of reasons. I remember being at the meetings in 2005, and one of the things that they kept talking about and emphasizing is the jobs that this is gonna produce. And, and the discussion came up about uh, apprenticeships for our young people that absolutely, Manny Rivera was superintendent at that time, absolutely this ought to produce apprenticeships for our young people and local jobs. That discussion has disappeared. And I guarantee you, if the history of what has occurred in this community around major construction projects, most of the people who do the work will be outsiders, people from outside not only of this city, but in many cases outside of this state. That money will leave the community with a Big swishing sound, it's all going out of the community. I can't say it's all, I'm probably over-exaggerating. Much of it will not, will not benefit the local economy. You see at the bottom, they talk this, this A, 3A. This, these are things charter schools are supposed to agree to, right? They're gonna accept more special ed, more so forth. Oh, that's the biggest mm. Right, well, that's guess what? Issue. Guess what? <laughs> we need to know this. Not all charter schools in Rochester signed on to this. And our suspicion is because of those last three bullets. We're among nine cities. And it was interesting because the reason why, and this was coming from the Gates Foundation that's crafted the language of this very document and handed it over to Brizard. The reason why in these kind of press conference meetings, the way they kind of framed it in their own rhetoric was that some charter operators were concerned about losing competitiveness. If, if, if they, they, if they took ed, special English ed, language, English language learners, homeless population, kids that feed a, uh, 
uh, free and reduced lunch, poverty level that really are from the community, from the neighborhood, that truly represent the demographic of the neighborhood, that's a powerful statement that they said we might lose our competitiveness. This is why we exist to begin with that we can skim out kids. So how, if they get rid of kids, and I don't they know. They oftentimes have it within a contract that if okay, well my child right. signs the contract, I sign together as a parent, and these contracts can be very punishable contracts in terms of if I don't make a parent-teacher night because I'm working nights or something along those lines, that there's grounds by which, oh, well, you have a bad track record and, and A, B, and C isn't going right with your child and you don't have a history of doing this or that. There's a lot of different ways in which when contracts are quote unquote broken by either parents or by students, that they are counseled out or just given the book. Another major reason it's problematic is because they're claiming that in order to do the work, they have to close some schools. They've already, Bazaar has proposed closing school two, six, and number 36 is under consideration. In fact, he's having meetings beginning this week and next week with people at those schools. He tried to ram this through if you've been paying attention without talking to anybody without talking to parents, without talking to educators, without talking even to the board that he's answers to. He just thought he was going to be able to ram this through. They say, okay, if we're going to do this work on this list of 12 schools, we got to have what they're calling swing space. We got to take the students from those schools where we're doing the work and put them somewhere while we're doing the work. So the places that he proposed were going to be schools two and six it's where, for the elementary level. They were going to move the students from the schools that are being worked on to two and six. But after the schools that are being worked on, after that work is complete, two and six are scheduled, were, he thought, scheduled to close. School two has a program that I don't think exists anywhere else in the state. They got a, a mental health program on site. Part of, the, part of the discussion about this is that those schools are underutilized, is their language, meaning you got more students than then uh, you don't have enough students for the amount of space. We see that as an opportunity to put in place support systems for children in those buildings like school two has started to do and school six. This was the press release the day that it came out in early, late November, early December when they were announcing this. It said, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has announced the names of the first nine cities of which Rochester's one to sign on to the District Charter Collaborative Compact an initiative designed to highlight and share best practices in knowledge. Cities will be eligible for a modest investment from a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to advance the goals outlined in the compact. Eventually, cities that have developed compacts will also be able to compete for a multi-million dollar grant. So, everybody's going to get something in the end, or maybe not, because the research that I was looking at through this, there was a lot of questions regarding is it just going to be little measly grants where there's a large um, a large mandate put in place and then a little bit maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 grand like to each city? Or is it going to be a bunch of losers, eight of us will be losers, and one will be some kind of big ransom win, win kind of situation? Either way, either one of those situations doesn't sound favorable. The question came up because people are naturally suspicious. Since we've read in the paper about newly developing charter schools, including one that's being led by Brazar's wife, is it possible that school two and six could later become charter schools? Yeah. Brazar is quoted in the newspaper as saying, I can't rule that out. So we <laughs> wonder. Uh, Superintendent Jean-Claude Brazar has publicly stated that he is committed to providing no cost lease or rental of buildings to charter schools in the city as part of this compact what our critique about privatization is all about. Capitalism is in crisis. We have the banks bailed out, there's foreclosures, all of the global economic crisis that we see happening make it so that businesses are searching for profit. Where are they gonna get their profit now? And they're looking at the public sector. They're looking at school, they're looking at public education, they're looking at gutting, pillaging, stealing our public resources that are meant to educate our children. That's where they're tapping their wealth from. It's very real, it's very strategic, and it's the context that we're in.